Today I broke down nuclear physics into seven levels, where level one is what most people think nuclear physics is, and level seven is what world-class experts actually do. In 2013, when I was just eight years old, my morning routine consisted of blowing myself out of bed, stumbling downstairs, and eating a bowl of Cocoa Krispies whilst watching an old rerun of The Simpsons. A recurring theme in all these episodes was Homer Simpson working at the power plant. The official title was Safety Inspector at the Nuclear Plant, which would typically involve monitoring reactors safety systems, ensuring compliance with nuclear regulations, and performing inspections and maintenance checks. But instead, what Homer actually did was sleeping at his desk, pushing random buttons without knowing what they do, and literally eating toxic waste despite clear labels which say, toxic waste, do not eat. So when I got to school and learned what nuclear power plants actually do, I was shocked. And what's more is radioactive waste actually looks like this, rather than looking like Smith's Slime Time Universal Cleaning Goo, which they show on The Simpsons. It turns out nuclear physics is very different to what most people think it is. So let's get into it and make sure to tell me in the comments which level you are, starting with level one, general knowledge. On this level, you learn that atoms are made up of a dense core called a nucleus surrounded by electrons. And this core is held together by the strong nuclear force, which is even stronger than a fully hydrated Eddie Hall. Fusion is what happens when you smash these little balls together called nuclei, and fission is when a nucleus breaks down into two smaller nuclei. Radioactivity comes in three different forms. Alpha radiation, which is the most ionizing but least penetrating, beta radiation, which is in the middle, and then gamma radiation, which is the least ionizing but the most penetrating. If you made it to level one, then you're officially smarter than Homer Simpson. It turns out that if Homer was to actually consume real radioactive waste, rather than the green slime from that one guava juice video, he would instantly suffer from internal organ damage from alpha and beta particles destroying the cells in his stomach lining, and within a couple of weeks, his bone marrow cells would be destroyed, crippling his blood production and leading to severe anemia infections and internal bleeding, and if he somehow survives all of that, he would still almost certainly get cancer. So the next time you see a drum of radioactive waste on the side of the road, Think twice before ripping it open like a can of sardines and scooping it into your fat gob. Level two, general knowledge for nerds. Instead of thinking of electrons and nucleons as tiny little balls, you think of them as probability clouds which obey Schrodinger's equation. Schrodinger's equation is basically when you put a cat in a box and you ask the question, does the cat have balls? The answer is both yes and no because I never specified whether the cat was male or female. So the probability is 50-50. In the same way, an electron exists in a cloud of probabilities until you observe it. And to find the probability of finding a particle in that spot, you just plug the potential energy of the system into Schrodinger's equation, solve for the wave function and then solve square it. Nuclear fusion, which is when you smush two nuclei together, usually requires a ridiculous amount of energy to overcome the Coulomb barrier and actually smash two positive particles right together. But in stars, because the temperature of the core is millions of degrees C, and because of the immense pressure, there's actually a chance of the particles quantum tunneling through the Coulomb barrier. Level three, undergrad student. You chose to do physics at university, but you basically ended up doing maths. Ha ha ha, take that physics nerd. The only difference is at the end of it, you'll actually be employable. You'll be studying either plasma physics, classical mechanics, fluid dynamics and hydrodynamic instabilities or reaction theory and rotations and the vibrations of the nucleus. Also, your lab work becomes more real because you'll have to learn how to actually calibrate the machinery, work with real detector data and code in Fortran or Python. There's also this thing called the PP chain, which disappointingly has absolutely nothing to do with what it sounds like. It stands for the proton-proton chain and it's also the main fusion process that powers stars like our sun. In a star, two hydrogen nuclei collide, then one proton turns into a neutron via beta plus decay, then you get deuterium, which is one proton plus one neutron, and then you've got positron and plus a neutrino, and then the deuterium fuses with another proton, and then you get helium-3, which is two protons plus one neutron, then you get two helium-3 nuclei, they fuse together, and then you get helium-4, which is two protons plus two neutrons, plus two free protons, and then those free protons can then go around and collide with all the other protons, continuing the PP chain. And if we make a PP chain on our own planet, we could theoretically power the whole world with clean clean energy. Don't click that. Although no one is trying to do proton-proton fusion because the kinetic energy required to overcome the Coulomb barrier is insanely high. Most modern fusion research relies on the deuterium-tritium fusion which has a much lower Coulomb barrier and a higher chance of fusion reaction at lower temperatures. 
Level four, masters or early PhD. This level is where you learn the quantum many body methods. Hartree Fock, Hartree Fock Boogly Boogly Boo, basic many body perturbation theory and the configuration interaction. You'll also encounter effective field theory and the idea that you can systematically organize nuclear forces and estimate uncertainties. Practically, this means learning to run large codes, debug parallel jobs and interpret convergence behavior. Typical days involve checking all the data you've collected, drinking a gallon of coffee and attending group meetings where a single diagram on the board takes a half an hour to explain. By this level you can actually work in a nuclear power plant without being a walking weapon of mass destruction and if you stop here then you can live a normal, healthy, happy life. Level 5. PhD Researcher at this level, you'll pick a niche and start specializing within it. Maybe you're experimenting with nuclear fusion, or designing a rare isotope experiment, or running our process network simulations. You're expected to produce publishable results, write sections of papers, and start supervising students or undergrads who also have no clue what quantum theory is. We're all just pretending. You'll also probably have to persuade others to fund massive experiments because who doesn't want to see what happens when you fire a bunch of particles at each other at like a million degrees Celsius? And because no one has the time to actually sit down and read a nuclear physics textbook, whenever somebody asks you what it is you do, you just hit them with the proton nucleus. But with today's sponsor Brilliant, you can actually understand complex topics without having to buy a physics textbook. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of interactive visual lessons in maths, science, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. Brilliant also has an app which makes it easy to learn on the go. Whether you're diving into a new topic or just doing a quick practice session, you can level up right on your phone. Their science courses help you develop scientific intuition through visual, interactive problem solving that gets you hands-on with key concepts. You can also learn to think like an engineer, without smelling like one, with lessons on electric and digital circuits, gear systems, physical structures, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org forward slash the unqualified tutor, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off of an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on there. Level six, postdoc researcher. Now you are a fully functioning independent researcher before you even manage to become a fully functioning independent adult. You lead projects, design experiments, and are fluent in pretty much all formal theory, data, and hardware in your field. You might be developing high order chiral interactions with quantified uncertainties, or leading the experiment campaign at a national facility, or coupling nuclear microphysics into astrophysical simulation. Your days are fragmented into writing and revising manuscripts, mentoring students, tuning detectors, and meeting international collaborators across different time zones. From your balls to your PP chain, you know it all, so you're no longer judged based on your knowledge, but on your papers, proposals, and the progress of your group. But on the bright side, every now and again, you'll get to go to Japan with all your cronies, but you won't really go outside much because you'll be spending all day doing a science. Level seven, world-class expert. This time, people actually cite your papers instead of making fun of them, funders listen when you speak, and your dad is actually proud of you instead of just pretending to be. Most days, you're juggling high-level strategy, dealing with committees, grant panels, and postdocs, but you'll still occasionally dive into crucial hands-on problems when necessary. You influence what experiments get built, which direction the entire community pursues, and you spend a lot of time communicating results with other fields. Getting here takes decades of sustained, rigorous research and an ability to problem-solve and think outside the box. Click on this video if you want to see more and piss off.